Hi, I am here with the wonderful Natalie Cook and Natalie Cook was um, kind enough to contribute to the first chapter and uh, welcome Natalie, how are you? Hey Leah, good to see you, I'm really well. Yeah, it's good to see you too. Um, how's everything in your world? Where are you at with everything right now? Yeah, so you know, we're in a strange world. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm business as usual in terms of work, so I'm working for Torrens University um, Director of Innovation, Industry and Employability for the Health and the Education Faculties, which is a fabulous role. Um, what but does I'm working mean, from home. What does that mean <laughs> exactly, that role? What does it mean? I know it's a Sounds mean. really good, but I've got no idea what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is, it is actually the longest title in the whole organisation. Um, <laughs> the role is fundamental. In, in fact, who would have thought such a role exists that draws on all of my passions? But it's fundamentally mm -hmm. about bringing, equipping our students Mm -hmm. with the best set of skills and experience to prepare them for their, for their life after their studies with us. Amazing. And that's across all of health, but, you know, my passion is, of course, and started with the, the naturopathic students. Amazing, amazing. And how did naturopathy find you? Like, how did you sort of bridge all these worlds? Because you've got lots mm. of different interesting things in your history. Mm. It's, it is interesting, isn't it? I mean, I was a, I was a late starter. To naturopathy, I came at it as a as a mature student. I did my Bachelor of Health Science at the Southern School after having had, you know, a career in sales and marketing, corporate communications, those sorts of roles, um, both corporate sector, airline industry actually, and not for profit sector. Um, but you know, I just I just had this this something in me. I knew I was curious, and if I, I cast it right back to when I was at school, I was really interested in food science. Mm. Um, if I take it back to the sorts of things I'd be drawn to. There was a lot of things about, you know, how, how your lifestyle impacts your health and well-being. Um, and, you know, you live through your 20s and you're impervious often, if you're lucky enough, to, to, to those impacts of, of lifestyle on your health and well-being. And then things start to give and you get a bit more curious. And I just found myself increasingly drawn to the notion of, of whether that was, you know, nutrition or whether it was just how we interact with the, with, the, with the bigger world, you know, how that impacts who we are and, and our health. Mm. And how did you get to NHAA and your presidency and then, um, you know, all of the global naturopathic pathways that you took? Mm, mm, who would have, saw, who, who would have <laughs> no. seen that coming either? I, look, as a, I think coming as a mature, a mature age student, you come with some passions already and some views on the way the world should work. And I remember when I started studying, I thought, this is crazy. Why, why doesn't naturopathy have a stronger voice in, in, in public health, in the community? And why don't we have a consolidated voice? And to be honest, that was the part that stirred me the most because I was like, you know, what a fabulously simple thing. Why wouldn't you harness the, the innate um, you know, mechanisms within our body. Why wouldn't you work with that? Why wouldn't you, you use what, you know, our food, our herbs, our you know, lifestyle changes that we could make? Why wouldn't you? How, how sensible? How sensible is that? Yeah. And why, why doesn't it have the cut through? So I guess as a student, I was curious about that. So I got involved in the, the student union, I guess, in a way, and, and, and how, how you can impact that. And then I went into uh, Vic Herbs, which I think most people in Australia would have heard of. It was the Victorian Herbalist Association, which later then went on to become a chapter of the, of the NHAA. Mm. Um, and so I was president of, the, of Vic Herbs for a while, which really exposed, I was very lucky, it, it's, it's a fabulous thing. It exposes you to so many names in our profession, you know, that you look up to, particularly as a student. You know, I, mean, I remember, you know, you call someone like Leslie Braun and go, oh my God, who am I? To, who, how, how, why am I calling these people? But you could. And then from there, um, I guess, you know, I became, my, I became a member of NHAA straight from, from studying. So that was the, the first and the only association that I, I joined. I had other association memberships as a student, um, but as a professional, that's absolutely what resonated with me. And, you know, I guess one thing leads to another. I, I got up, I was in practice for, for a number of years and then I started lecturing as well. And I guess I was starting to see different sides of the profession. Um, and that gave me an interest to sort of harness my background, which was in sales and marketing. My original degree was a marketing degree. How, could I harness that knowledge and experience and help our profession? And so that led me to joining the board. Um, I was lucky enough while I was on the board, um, just through circumstance, I guess, at the time, you know, I did a, a piece to camera for the Project TV, which, which gave me a, a lot of confidence and, a, and a, a sense of the power of our voice you know, that we can have if, if given the, the vehicle and if we're clear in our message 
about what we're doing and why we're doing. Uh, we're not wacky. We're not fringe. We're not. <laughs> we're not a lot of things. I think that that we're portray portrayed to be. And so, my passion for how do we portray the the best of the profession, the 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 part with the standards and the accountability and the education and the yeah. and the want to work with the with the broader health um, sector. How do we bring that to the fore? So, yeah, I was on the board, and then I was the president, and and then as part of that, uh, led you know, built on your work, to be fair, in joining the World Naturopathic Federation and then through our association joining that as one of the foundation members, life privileged enough to, to take a role on their executive for a while as well as their, as their treasurer. So, you know, what a, what a crazy ride. And, you know, with that, getting to go to the United States and, and be part of global congresses on, on the profession or mm. speaking at conferences in Brazil. I mean, you know, very, 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 very lucky. Yeah, beautiful. Where do you see naturopathy globally then, having been able to have such a microcosm, macrocosm perspective of it all? Yeah, it's, it's, an, it's, it's this interesting dichotomy. You know, it's, it's a global profession, and I don't know that people necessarily realise that. You know, it's in over 80 countries around the world. It's practised in, in every WHO world region. It's recognised by the World Health Organisation in their traditional and complementary medicine strategy for 2014 to 2013. 20, 2023, which, you know, we're in the midst of at the moment. So it's, mm. it's there. Mm. Um, we have different models of, of practice. There's different laws that govern the way we practice around the world. But the thing that really strikes me is that despite the fact that, you know, in different countries, there might be different ways that we're regulated or different tools of trade that practitioners use, at the heart of it, we're not so different. And that's the bit that gives me great uh, optimism mm -hmm. um, and great deal of pride, to be honest, you know, that we've got these fundamental principles that no matter if you studied in Canada or the US or in Europe somewhere, whether you studied in English or not in English, those tenets still hold true. And mm -hmm. that gives me a great deal of, of confidence for the, for the future of our profession. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's, there's definitely nothing quite like your chapter anywhere else out there at the moment. And I think it's such a, it's a beautiful chapter to start the book, to introduce us to how broad, how skilled, how, how universal our philosophies and our principles are. Mm. And, you know, thank you so much for contributing it because I think it's so needed because I think that, you know, in different countries around the world, everyone sits in their own little world thinking that they're so unique when really they're not within mm. Africa, obviously. Um, but yet mm. we, we can achieve so much and we do achieve so much. So I think it's really helpful and really grateful to be able to include it. So thank you. Thank you. Well, what an honour. Who knew I would be the first chapter in, in the text? It's a, it's a, it's a fabulous honour. Thank you, Leah. I really yeah. appreciate it. You know, it's great. But, but where to for you now? Where do you think you're heading? And are you going to continue doing anything on a global scale or focusing more in Australia? Or where are you heading? Mm, it's a really interesting question. At the moment, my, um, my, my term on the board completed at the end of uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. So... I'm taking a, a bit of a hiatus from being too political at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you, can, you, can under, you can appreciate that oh, yeah. um, oh, yeah. that's necessary. <laughs> um, but I still care, you know, yeah. and I still, I, I, I want to have an influence. I'm not sure how that will be at the moment. As I said, I get to exert my influence in the education sector. Yep. Um, with borders closed around the world at the moment, I guess in a way that gives you the opportunity to, you're not bounded about, about by physically where you can go. Mm. Um, you can do anything. I'm still involved with the WNF. Um, I'm involved in their communication subcommittee and in their Western Pacific region. Yeah. Um, so I, I still have an involvement there, um, although certainly not to the degree that I, I have in the past. So I think for now my, my influence is, is in the education space, you know, advocating for the profession um, at a tertiary education level, mm -hmm. uh, in, ensuring that we maintain those standards, uh, that that those standards reinforce um, all that we aim for in terms of ensuring that as, as a profession we have rigour, uh, credibility, accountability, yep. uh, and that we're producing graduates that um, hold those tenants dear to themselves as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so text, text like this, classic, you know, having, having, having a text that is, is founded in science, 
but absolutely, you know, recognises, acknowledges, respects the, the history from which we've come. I mean, that, that to me is the perfect blend of naturopathy. It's, you know, we, we know where we've come from. Uh, we, we know what's special about what we do. Um, and here we are constantly evolving as science evolves and we learn more and more about how the body works. So, yeah, that's where I am. Fantastic. Well, I look forward to seeing it all unravel, but thank you for both your contribution in the book with MHAA, with all the world um, health activities as well. And, you know, it's a real credit to include you. So thank you. It's an honour. Thank so, you. We'll see you soon. <laughs> see ya.